everyone, Dmitry Lipinski with the Roofing Insights, and today I'm sitting here with Kyle and Pate. Thank you guys for coming, joining yeah, me yeah. here in Las Vegas. We're here in the convention, Wind the Storm Conference, where thousands of contractors come in to learn the trades, the secrets. Pat and Kyle are insurance adjusters, independent public adjusters. So what do public adjuster guys do? Like, what's, what's your titles? Public adjuster is an advocate for the policyholder. We have their best interest in mind. We look out for them, their interests, rather than the insurance company. Tell us your story. What have you been doing before you become public adjusters and how it came about? Because I don't think there's a school for public adjusters. It's like, you know, traditional school. Not, not traditional schools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there, so. there are schools. But, like, but how do you end up in a... You know, job like that. So I actually got involved in this business because uh, I had a claim on my personal house. I got paid about four thousand dollars from Allstate. I was able to get the work completed for about fifteen hundred. I was gloating pretty good to a couple of my friends. You know, I thought I made a nice, healthy little profit. One of my friends so happened to be a public adjuster. So he said, send me the pictures if you have the damage. And that four thousand dollar claim was actually worth forty thousand mm. dollars. So, you know, he and I got to talking, you know, the business interested me. I was very intrigued. How long ago was, was that? It was about 10 years ago. So I was living in New York at the time. Uh, there was a bunch of tornadoes, you know, running rampant around the south. I moved down to Atlanta, Georgia, to started working wind and tornado claims. And with the climate change, there's more stuff down south. Like, it's hails now in Atlanta. How crazy is that? It does. It never hailed. 20 years ago, 10 right. years ago, now it's almost every year. So that's, you know, how I got involved in the business. You know, I wasn't an adjuster for the carrier uh, beforehand. I went straight into public adjusting. I've been doing it ever since. So. What about you, Pete? So my story is a little bit different than Kyle's. I, my background's actually in uh, professional development coaching and business coaching. My second year of law school, I realized I didn't want to be. You do look like a lawyer. Yeah, I, I, have, my, <laughs> I have my JD, but yeah, I don't practice. Um, my second year of law school, I knew I didn't want to be, didn't want to be an attorney and I hated every day, but I was like, I'm pot committed. Let's get out of here and figure something else out. At that time, um, I coached clients as well. I had a company pick me up and I did some 1099 coaching for them. And then I said, hey, I'll start my own company. So by the time I graduated law school, I had a decent amount of clients. Kyle and I met because he uh, hit on my wife in a bar one night and then two what? years later. What? Two, yeah, Kyle, Kyle hit on my wife in a bar two years later. This is later. still in dispute. No, this is <laughs> not in dispute. And uh, two years later we worked together. So, you know, he pulled me over. He said, I think you'd be really good at this. And now I'm the National Business Development Director. We work in about 44 states, two territories. I think we're gonna get into Canada a little bit this year. Awesome. And, you know, it just, go in fighting the good fight for the insured, right? Well, let's talk about it because um, if you are a homeowner or you've never been on insurance restoration side and don't understand the claims, just like me, you probably have seen tons of commercials, anything from Geico, from you in good hands and, you know, I'm, I like uh, following basketball and, you know, State Farm is almost in every uh, game out there. So insurance companies have billions of dollars. They advertise like crazy. We all see the message, whether it's progressive, all state state farm they're all trying to convince uh, pretty much public how good they are and if you go with them you cover it uh, being a contractor myself for the last five years I've seen horror stories I've seen a lot of frustration uh, I've seen uh, very very bad stuff um, like it, it's a big fight and it's not even fight because like for example if, if you're a small contractor and you have billion dollar corporation here and you have a homeowner and uh, homeowner have a damage you're trying to help them to restore the property to condition it was before and you, you you're the good guy but insurance company trying to uh, picture is a greedy guy who's just trying to get more money and they like hey we pay you ten thousand dollars and you want more it's not enough for you and so on and so we've seen the ugly and let's talk about it let's talk because the purpose like the reason i invited you guys for interview i i, I want to I want to start exposing the ugly. I want to, like, how many claims you, have, you guys have done? So how many claims you've assisted, like, over the last couple of years? Or well, over the past 10 years, I've been involved in, like, roughly 20,000 claims. 20,000. So, you, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. So if you've done 20,000 claims, it means, as a public adjuster, it means that 20,000 claims that went through you, it was some kind of dispute with a company, right? Like, with the insurance. Yeah, when we get involved on a claim, Right, we, it's our job to figure out how much that claim has been underpaid by. 
um, you know, down to a small little debt claim that's only worth $1,000. Well, maybe that is worth 1500 all the way we scale it up to a large commercial loss. Would you agree with the statement that insurance companies commit fraud? I mean, I could go with that train of thought. I, it's it's well, definitely well, a disservice. Right. Well, well, well the, 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 the reason behind it, the reason I, I can make that statement is because when what, what public doesn't know, when insurance adjuster goes out, and, and I see it so many times, they go out, they have all the power, all education, all the tools to make it right from the day one. They literally, like they train to do it. So what's happening is they're gonna go out, they're gonna write initial claim. They can literally go and make it $20,000, but they're gonna do 16,000 and they come up with excuses. Oh, we were in a hurry or we missed a few things. Like I want people to know and when I educate my customers, insurance companies don't do it by mistake or by, by laziness, they do it on purpose. And that's why I say, and for me, that's a fraud. When you libel, and you can write a 20, like as a adjuster, if I can write $20,000 estimate and I do 18,000 and homeowner or contractor calls me, it's like, hey, you missed a few things. For me, I just committed a fraud. And if I do it every single day and somebody, it, it's like doing the homework. It's like going to school and the way the public sees it. So insurance company comes in and writes the check. Homeowner sees the check, like a lot of money, like, oh, my insurance company took care of me, right? And now when somebody comes in and asks for more, the insurance company is always trying to picture us as greedy, it's not enough, and try to find cheaper contractors. And unfortunately in this business, almost in any business, you can't find people who will do it for that and do it for less. Doesn't mean it's right, but you can always find somebody to do it for less. So insurance company almost trying to have this image that it's it's never enough for contractors. So the guy that goes out and adjusts the claim is not the agent. What people constantly say to me is like, oh, my agent takes care of me, right? That's, your agent isn't involved. Your agent was a salesperson. And sure, Billy, your buddy that you've known since high school is definitely gonna write you a great policy. But when the time comes that your house has an issue and the adjuster comes out, Billy doesn't have skin in the game. It's all about that particular adjuster. It's almost like a disconnect within the company. They keep the relationship with the agent golden, right? That's why there's basically almost two companies within these organizations. You have your adjusting department mm -hmm. within these captive carriers, and then you have the agents. They send you a birthday card. They probably take you out to dinner. Your agent's the best Sponsors guy. Sponsors my kid's t-ball team. How could, how could he do, he wouldn't do me wrong. I hear that every day almost. My agent is gonna take care of me. He wouldn't, he wouldn't pull the wool over my eyes in any way. And at the end of the day, what, what we do need to address, I suppose, is he's looking out for his best interest. The more claims that are being filed, it's gonna hurt his loss ratio. Well, another question too is a lot of people public general public thinks that insurance companies are losing money because you know we have so many like climate change like it helps more than ever it's like it, you know everybody's like hearing in the news it's you know like in Minnesota we have like oh it's two billion dollar claim but um, I don't know if you know the numbers but when I look at 2016 and this is astonishing number I think they um, it was 65 billion dollars that was collected like in premiums and I think the payout amount in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, was like five, six billion. So like, when you think about that number, so like, when you say like, hey, we have so many claims and every single claim we see is underpaid, right. it's like, is insurance not having money? And then you see like, you had 65 billion and you only pay out five billion and you nickel and them like, and increase what, like 30, 40% on average? Like if you just pay what you're supposed to, you're still profitable. So it's not like, that business, it's very profitable. It's not like they breaking even or going in red right. like to survive. So do you want to hear a great story? Sure. Um, so Kyle and I, um, we're good friends. We work together. But at the same point in time, like we also give each other just like lots of crap. And so my house got hit. Like good friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like what friends good friends do, right? I was like, oh, so you think you're good. My house just got hit by straight line winds and hail. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to file the claim and just let the adjuster do it. And then I'm going to give it to you on the back end and let's see what happens. I was like, if you're as good as you say you are, like, let's go. Like, I want to see if you can really do it. So my house got paid out at like 2700 and Kyle took it to 22000 So the adjuster came 10X. out. Yeah, adjuster came out, paid me like 
twenty two hundred bucks, twenty seven hundred bucks, and Kyle took it to like twenty two thousand something, but, and he was like, "This is so underpaid," and I knew it was, but I just wanted to put him to the test, and I mean, my house is like, it's funny that it happened like that on mine, but I mean, that'll just go to show you, if you're a normal insured, that's what's possible. You know, they no, didn't pay for my roof, the stuff well, the, in my the backyard. The carrier told you that the roof wasn't damaged. Yeah, he literally looked right? at me and said the roof's so not damaged. I knew why it was. Would he th why would you think it's damaged if the adjuster came out and said He's it wasn't an damaged? He's an expert. Adjuster's an expert. expert. He listen, he works for the insurance company. Exactly. Right, yeah. And then, exactly. you know, they have their best interest at heart. And it was funny that it shook out like it did, right? For it to be that big of a discrepancy. And I'm sure that's a slight outlier. We don't see 10x every day, but sure. we right. always see double. Well, at, if, least, if, exactly. at least two if, to three x. If, if it goes from, especially it goes from repair to replacement, right. absolutely. Right. But but here's the cool thing what I see. So your company, Premier, Premier Claims, I see so many companies, like you have pretty good competition right now and I like it because the more competition you have the more customer service oriented you will become because right. you, you know we don't want to public adjuster firms dominate the market either because now you're gonna become a bad guys and greedy and stuff so to keep everybody in check competition is good but what I like to see in the industry happening is all of these companies uh, like on the rise right now like your demand is huge I mean I see so many public adjusting firms and the reason like you guys should not be even in business you should not down. exist if, the, if 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 insurance companies would do what they're supposed to we you should not job. or you, you you could be working for insurance companies right but now like you know let, let's say public adjusting industry is like five ten billion dollars and insurance industry is like 300 billion dollars like your your industry is is a side effect of their negligence right you know uh, but what's the solution guys the last question I have for you so we have a public who trying to understand and, well, I would say public a little bit confused because to educate on the claims, like for example, I'm, right now I'm involved in a criminal investigation. So I have a person who used to work for me, um, church is involved, so the guy, like prosecutor, so th the guy has pocketed some money, right? And uh, I'm a key witness and uh, it wasn't, he was my salesperson and he did something not involve my company by any means but uh, long story short detectives called me in and it was a it was a three hundred eighty thousand dollar claim mm. and uh, it was a public adjuster involved lawyers involved quite a few things so I remember sitting with this detective and they're like so looking at insurance paperwork what this guy did so there's a I mean lawyers of the church involved uh, there literally it was like seven eight people who got paid like j because who's engineer why do you need engineer it was exactly made person it was somebody who wrote the claim originally why do you need all of these people here and it takes time to educate right mm -hmm. and homeowners the way they see it you know you have a claim insurance adjuster comes easiest route is just like do what adjuster say like you said because he's professional he knows what he's doing so how do we what's the solution how do we educate or um, educate consumers because we don't have billion dollars to spend on commercials and, and good hands are not good hands they're boxing hands this like is, we debate this all the time you know information is a readily available and that information is truthful um, and it's easy on the carrier side to kind of like co-market so it's good hands is what they're saying is like hey you know we're going to take care of you like buy our service but at the same time it's not only buy our service but that when you buy our service you're being taken care of it's like co basically co-marketing the fact that you should not only purchase from us but then we're also not going to underpay a claim right um, what we have to do is we also have to be tactful I feel with inside our industry on how we educate the consumer because I think it looks bad if we just go out and say you guys are getting screwed you can't exactly. do this so what we have to do is you know we, we have to be tactful with how we approach this and you know I was talking to some guys yesterday that work for uh, another PA firm and they're like from near where I grew up and I was like you know I don't, I don't look at you guys as my competition like I look at us as like this army and we're, our mm -hmm. job is to go out and to educate I want you guys to get every single claim in that area that's underpaid because when the if that's a the case then the, every single person like the public's gonna know about this industry and they're gonna know about the issues at hand so I don't even look at like anybody that's a PA in the entire country as a, no I look at it as like we're all here like if we got every single 
claim we could, the market we is, couldn't handle it. The market Nobody is so could. underserviced. Drown the entire market. But but it's hard message. Like I look at us as like at you guys, it's all, we're almost like those attorneys who, like, PI you, attorneys. Well, the thing is, the thing about this, if you like, let's say you get in a car accident, right? And you need a journey to, to get as much as possible, right? Now, how do you target it? And I see, like, it, there's a really fine line how you advertise yourself. Yeah. Because you say, oh, you got screwed. Like, we can help you. Now you can have testimonials, this and that. And now public is actually getting adjusted to it. I mean, some people will take advantage of the system and, like, advantage of lawyers and stuff. But we have to develop cleaner message. And my question to you, do you have a slogan? Like, what's your, like, you're in good hands. Is their slogan. What's your slogan? We've got a couple. Um, you know, it's premier claims, we get it covered, right? So that's one thing we have. And then people, we also are like one of the only companies that will take claims that are less than $50,000, um, particularly lack of our size and acumen. And so like we joke around like premier claims from sheds to malls, we do it all, you know. Um, Love it. I want, we, uh, we haven't been pushing that one out, but I want to get some tank tops from summer that say that. So, you know, we're like hanging out, people, people buy into it. but. You know, that's our, that's our thing is, you know, yesterday we got blessed again by Gary Vaynerchuk and Kyle and I say this all the time that we don't run a PA company. We really run a marketing company. Yep. And you're Gary, a media company first. Yeah, yeah. Gary like submitted that in with us in New Orleans, I feel like. And then uh, we're like, all right, we're doing not only us a disservice by not doing this, but the public. And I think the you're the media that, company. Yeah, it's, forums it's, like this is how we do it. Right? I, think, I think everybody in this industry needs to focus on one thing that he said yesterday is building a brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, building a brand before the disaster happens. Mm -hmm. and being there, being trustworthy, building credibility. Um, you know, in marketing, when we, you know, talk to policyholders, when we talk to these people that have been affected by damage, you know, let us check to see if the claim has been adjusted properly. We rarely ever come out and say, you've probably been underpaid. You probably were of screwed course, by the carrier. Let me just check and, you know, I'll read through the estimate. You know, we can have our attorneys and adjusters just give it a, a second look. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Well, thanks for coming, guys. Keep, right. keep fighting the good fight. All right. Enjoy the conference. Yeah.